Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday, a time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. Like is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like is 101. What are the basics of Like is 101? Dating equals porking. That's the, that's the number one tenet of Like is 101. The purpose of a date for a man is to get laid. When we are talking to you ladies, we're not hearing a word you say. Not a word. (laughs) Until we've seen you naked, we can't hear you. So you can go blah, blah, blah all you want, and we're going to sit there making the appropriate noises and nodding and, uh, you know, looking compassionate and interested and fascinated. But we're not. What we're fascinated with is what color your nipples are and how quickly we can get that blouse off. That's what we're concerned about. That's really all we're concerned about. Now, that doesn't mean that down the line, some of us males will want to have a relationship with you or that we won't. All it means is we can't concentrate on that until we've gotten you and and, 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 and had you physically. Until we've had you physically... None of the other stuff matters. We don't care what your opinions are. We don't care what you've read, what movies you've seen, what TV shows you watch, what your best friend said the other day. Uh, we don't care about what your gay friends are saying, what your ex-boyfriend was like, or your ex-husband. We don't hear it. We don't care. That's the most honest thing I can say to you. I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm not saying it to be misogynist. It's a fact. We don't hear you. We buy you drinks, which you take from us, and we know because you're the cheapest creatures on earth, ladies. We buy you drinks uh, to get you drunk, to get you to stop talking so much, and kiss us. And ultimately, we want uh, everything else to follow. There's no doubt about it. That is what we're all about. And guys, if you have any dates planned, we're getting laid. It's not the top of your agenda. Cancel them now. It's Thursday. Now is the time to cancel whatever dates you have coming up this weekend. It's that simple. I couldn't make it any simpler for you. (laughs) Dating equals porking. Like is one of one students believe in the three strikes you're outlaw. If a woman does not put out in the first three days, there's three dates, she's done. She's toast. We lose her. No exceptions. Three dates and out. No promises, nothing. We don't have sex without a condom. We don't have sex unless she is using some form of birth control. Because we don't want to have babies. Because we don't want a woman getting into our bank accounts for the rest of our lives. I mean, it's just that simple. 
Stop with the falling in love and stop with the saying, oh, I don't care, you know, if it happens, happens. I just like to ride bareback. I like the way it feels. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I hope 30 seconds of ejaculation is worth 18 years of, of monthly payments. 18 years, boys, is 216 months. 216 months. Are you hearing me? 216 payments. Have you ever had an orgasm that was worth 216 monthly payments? Hell, your Toyota Corolla was only worth 60 monthly payments. 216 monthly payments. That's like three and a half cars. Right? Think about it. One orgasm, the equivalent of three and a half cars. <laughs> you could have bought a car in 2007, another one in uh, 2010, another one in 2013, and half a car in 2016. That's how much that orgasm would cost. I'm trying to put it in terms you will understand. If she's not using birth control, she wants to have a baby. That's why she's not using it. Don't take the excuse that she's got uh, high blood pressure or that she gets fat or she gets cranky. Because remember, she's talking about the birth control pill. That leaves 11 other forms of birth control. And you know what? They don't all have the same side effects. Some have no side effects at all. So uh, if a woman tells you she's not using birth control for any reason, generally the reason is because she wants to have a baby. Do you really want to have a baby with somebody like that? Think about this for a second. Do you want to have a baby with somebody under those circumstances? Do you? Phew. Like as one of one students, do not spend $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. Spending more money doesn't guarantee getting laid. I've explained this to you many times, boys. Spend as little as you can get away with. Avoid dinner if possible. Find ways to hook up with her for a drink after she's eaten. It's that simple. And we don't date single mothers. They already made at least one mistake. We don't want to be paying for the next one. Can we make this any clearer to you? Our toll-free telephone number on Lycus 101 is 1-800-5800-TOM. Come on, join our classroom here. one 800 800 8 Six six. Here comes Oscar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing, Senor Don Tomas? Doing great, Oscar. Oh, thank you for picking up my call, Senor Don Tomas. I got two questions for you, sir. Yes, uh, sir. First of all, let me tell you that I did a big mistake, but I'm trying to do it right this time because I'm sorry I didn't listen to you before. I only got like three months listening to your radio station, and this is the first time that I got through. And one of my biggest concerns is that you were told, you always talk about a Bloody Mary that I don't know how to do, that I want to do, because I, I want to do it, because I don't want to pay for a kid for 18 years. Oh, okay, a Bloody Mary is a drink. We talk about a, a, the Hail Mary. Uh -huh. ha the Hail Mary. Oscar, yes. Oscar, do you know football at all? American football? Yes. All right, do you know what a Hail Mary is in football? No, senor. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you. A Hail Mary in football is when he get down the last few seconds of the game and the team with the ball is losing by a touchdown or maybe only three points or something. But the point is, they've got a few seconds left to try to win the game. Uh -huh. So the quarterback drops back and throws the ball as far as he can, as far down the field as he can, and he hopes the guy's going to catch it. And if he catches it, he runs down and uh, gets a touchdown and wins the game. But it's called a Hail Mary because the quarterback is praying that the guy will catch it. Mm. Okay? And a Hail Mary, in this case, is when you tell a woman, you, you what you really want is you want her to have an abortion. So you, uh -huh. so you tell a woman, oh, honey, I love you so much. I really love you. And one day we will have children. One day we will get married, have children, have a nice house and all that. But right now we don't have the money to buy a house. We can't afford to have a kid. I'm trying to get my career together and all that. So if you have the abortion today in a couple of years, we get married, we will have a kid. And you, just like the quarterback, you hope she'll catch that running for a touchdown, right? 
Then what happens is, after you get her to have the abortion, and you go with her, you go down there with her to have the abortion, okay? Okay. Once you take her down there and she has the abortion and you pay for it, right? You pay for it. It's going to cost you somewhere between 400 and 500 bucks, probably. It's okay. No problem about that. Okay. Then then what happens is you take her to the McDonald's, get her an Egg McMuffin. Oh, come on, honey. Let me, <laughs> let me get you some breakfast. You get her an Egg McMuffin. Then you take her home. You put her under the covers. And after you put her under the cover, you break up with her because how dare she get pregnant and try to have you have a baby. <laughs> That's what it is. I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, you give that a... The thing you, I've ever heard. <laughs> now, you give that a try, Oscar, and I, you, I will. you call me back and let me know how it works out. Yes, and I got another question, Senor Don Tomas. Yes. Um, I don't have that much good of a game. Can you teach me how to approach to a woman and what to tell her? You want a woman to think you've got a good job, that you're making good money, uh, what do you do for a living, Oscar? I am a truck driver. You're a truck driver. Well, you're not a truck driver anymore. You own the trucking company. Okay. You are the owner. Okay. Because remember, who cares? By the time she finds out you're not the owner, you already got what you want. Oh, and I have to be well-dressed? You don't even have to be that well-dressed. The owner of the company, you know, uh, uh, the owner of the trucking company, uh, does he wear a suit to work? No. No. No, you've seen the guy. He doesn't wear a suit to work. You own the company. And because you're the owner, you can go into work dressed any way you want. Okay. Then, then here's the thing you do. If you really want to get her to uh, believe you, okay. Do you live in East L.A., Oscar? Excuse me? You live in East L.A.? Yes. Okay, here's what I want you to do. You Before you go out at night, you, I want you to go through the hills. You know, go up where Oscar De La Hoya lives. You know what I'm talking about? You go up there. Yes. Find find an area where there's construction going on. Okay? Yeah. Then what you do is when you got a girl in the car, tell her, you know this apartment I'm living in, I'm just here temporarily while they're working on my house. Oh, 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 oh. Right? Then you take her up and you say, look at the construction. This is mine. Oh, man. She will give it right away. That's exactly right. Oh, man. That's good listening to you. <laughs> oh, man. You just saved my life. Thank uh, you, Senor Don Tomas. And I hope you keep on going, like, for a long, long time. Oscar. And if I want, I have a kid. I'm going to teach him whatever you're telling me to do. I love that. Thank you, Senor Don Tomas. And take me out uh, Mexican style. Mexican style. All right, Oscar. Here you go. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. I had a girl stay over, and she asked me if she could borrow a shirt to wear to work. When I said, I really don't know if I'm breaking a Likas rule or not, so I don't know if I should let you borrow a shirt to wear. And she said, well, if you want to live your life by a talk show, you go right ahead. I don't only live my life by the talk show. I live my life by the king of all talk shows. Mr. Zach, Tom Likas. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. Like his show, like his 101. I am your professor. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Um, yes. Oh, gosh. It's really been a long time coming that I've wanted to talk to you. Well, what have you been waiting for? Well, that you just got. You just got my goat today, and, uh, well, you get my goat often, but I have to tell you, the teachings and your mentality and everything you're teaching all these men, ignorant men about women, is exactly the reason why women do the things they do. It's exactly the reason why women need to be gold diggers and women need to be skanks. And, but, but what and came first there? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Exactly. And what came first is men or pigs. And that's the oh, reason why. Oh, I see. So, so women were women Miss... Wait, wait, wait. And so women were Miss Goody Two-Shoes. And then suddenly uh, men were just such pigs they had to change... So then we had to change again? What happened exactly? No, what happened exactly was is that men 
treat women poorly and disrespectful. Women I see. Women had to learn tactics to protect themselves at all causes. How do you know women were? Wearing, how do you know women were wearing gold diggers first? How do I know what? How do you know women were not gold diggers first, and then men had to react? Well, how do you know which came first? Well, uh, dear, you're claiming to know. I'm claiming. I women, never, by the way, dear, I, dear, 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 by the way, I never claimed ever that women were a certain way and so men had to react. I'm just simply telling how uh, men how to deal with women who are like that, who regardless of who was first. You're the one claiming like, to know who was like first. Had, and that's just like I tell all my friends and all the women I know how to protect themselves. And when you get married, you better sock your money away because... The chances are that he can cheat on you. Yeah, and, and all and all you're trying to do is trap a man so you can away. take our money. <laughs> that you want to trap a man so you can take our money. No, yes, no, that's yes, not it at all. yes, it is. No, there's, there's no man worth trapping. Oh, they, then why bother getting married? Well, funny that you say that. I'm about to get married. I, I get, that doesn't it doesn't answer the question. I'm why not, bother? I'm not a gold digger, and I'm not. Why bother anything. getting married? He, women get married, first of all. What for? A lot of women get married because they are in love and they want to have a family. Oh, stop it. You, you don't sound like love comes anywhere near this. You yeah. sound like a very pragmatic, cynical individual. No, I'm very upset that you're teaching men all these things, and it's just pr it's making this problem go on and on and on. No, it isn't, dear. My, my, my men would never marry you, so you've got nothing to worry about. My no, Not everyone's my man either. would never marry free. you anyway, so you have nothing to worry about. Why are you telling guys not to take somebody on a nice date? That it doesn't matter because we can get laid without spending a penny I, on you. I wouldn't even. I don't even know anybody that would pork a guy if they took him out for a hot. Well, dog. that's what they tell you, dear. But what you don't realize: many of your best friends have low self-esteem and will do something they'll regret for the rest of their lives, uh, and then uh, not even realize they're doing it until it's done. Yeah, but the thing is, is I my friends would never and they're not you don't know they what they would do things. dear you don't okay. know what they're doing when you're not looking them in the eye you don't know well, what I they've know done right. no. a lot of women do have low self-esteem right but for any women that are listening out there don't even think <laughs> of putting out don't even think of putting out for a guy that just takes you out for a drink and not a nice dinner because he doesn't even think you're worth it he doesn't even think you're no because I mean, that's the whole thing you you're charging for your vagina like a cab driver has a meter in the front of the cab no but it should be old-fashioned respect I anyone mean, has and nothing to do with respect somebody dear i could just show up and i could just show up and sit on a rock with you and have a conversation why should i have to spend money on you it's because you're charging by the pound taking somebody out it's your charge you're charging by the pound for that vagina that's what you're doing what would you i mean you're selling you crack somebody to put huh? out on a third date some yes, that we put out on a third dear. Day. We're just looking for a nice, warm place to uh, get it done. That's all we're concerned about here, dear. But I mean, do any of the guys that are in your classes want to settle down? I mean, obviously not. Do you ever? Why would anything? they? I I tell them they. You, you, by the way, I'm settled down. I'm I I live alone, but I am settled down. I have okay. a daily routine. I have a beautiful house. Um, I have great friends. I have uh, rituals of Thanksgiving and Fourth of July and Christmas with my friends. Uh, <laughs> I am settled down, but I don't need a woman having the key to my place or the PIN number to my ATM card to be settled down. But, okay, you never want to be in a committed relationship again? I don't need it. You don't need it, probably because you had problems in committed relationships. Darling, it's not a matter of having problems. I'm happier than I've ever been. But that's fine, but that's not for everybody. Some of these guys want to be in committed relationships. What kind of No, no, they, they, they only, no, the only time a guy wants to be in a committed relationship is if he thinks he can't get laid any other way. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. They're all men. Well, you know what? You're right, and that's why men are pigs. No, oh, we're not exactly. pigs, dear, because remember, when you play your little prissy game and, 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 and uh, you threaten to hold uh, up that little carrot up there and say you're not going to put out until we've dated you 47 times or until we take you to a nice place, there's somebody up the block and around the corner who'll do the heavy lifting for us. We don't need you. That's how, that's how we know that they mean business, not business in a sense of just having sex. 
That's how we weed out the men that are really... Well, guess what? Until we have sex with you, we don't have any interest in a relationship with you. And even if we ever do have an interest in a relationship with you, it's not until we've had sex with you. No, after... Oh, after sex, then you're ready to move on to new. Well, no, I am. I am, but that doesn't mean that... And I am, but that doesn't mean everybody else is. Some guys are not like that. But I will tell you about guys. Guys don't hear a word you say until you take your clothes off. Well, you know what? Usually, after you do, everything goes downhill from there. So, ladies, hold out as long as you can because it's not going to get any better than that. <laughs> you the really, do you really think this is going to have any effect on anybody? Please. The best, darling. It, darling, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Any woman who refuses to put out, we are getting it somewhere else. Trust me. And here's here's the ironic part for women like you. It must be really hard to take. You know, it has to do with how high or low your self esteem is. And the irony is that the better looking a woman is, the lower her self esteem is. The better looking she is, the nines and tens of the lowest self esteem of anybody. They are the ones who have most easily gotten they're the ones who will most readily put out well i don't know about that but if i do has respect for themselves we don't want people really who have respect for themselves we want people who okay, take their panties out, off going out having drinks I, we want we, we want a woman to be the equivalent of a human clock i want you to put your left leg at the 12 and your right leg at the three but dating is different than going out, meeting somebody, and wanting to get laid. Okay, anybody can do the that. The reason you guys know. go dating, I don't care who they are, and that includes the guy you're marrying, that at first they're just going out to get laid. You're going out and you're dressing up and you're preparing all your cutesy conversation, and he's preparing to take your bra off. Yes, this is true. And you know what? When they get there... It's not everything's downhill from there. Well, how did you keep? Well, how did you keep? How did you keep your fiance in line? Well, uh, you know how long he waited. You know how long he waited. We were friends. He tried to get down my pants for ten years. There you go. Ten years. There we you friends. go. Well, there you go. There you go. So, I, in other words, he's right, a pussy. He's a pussy who doesn't know how to close a deal. No, he was going out and, and you see, my my students, in their, in their my life. students would never waste ten years on somebody what ever. And let me also guarantee friends. you that we over that friends. ten years, he got laid by countless other women. He got, of course, he did. We were yeah. friends. Of course, he did. But he friends, still quote unquote. Me. He still wanted me, and that was the bottom well, line. Well, that's wonderful. In the meantime, my students would never waste 10 years on women like you. He, he still had girlfriends and all kinds of things, and we were just friends. And he still wanted to get down my pants. Now, why he would want you with another 50,000 miles on the odometer, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm worth the wait. No, uh, yeah, that's that I says you. I Hang on a second here, dear. Hang on a second here, dear. Now, now dear, dear, who wants want to hold out? out? I get what I want tonight. No, but you can no. Let them let them fork anybody they want. If you want a guy, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying they can go fork whoever they want before right. you're in a committed relationship. Hang on a second here, Lisa. Do. Michael, what did you want to say to Lisa here? I would say 10 years, Tom. I wouldn't hold no, out 10 you, minutes for this chick. Let me, hold on, let me, say, so let me say my piece, and then you can talk, okay? I'm not going to disrespect you by calling you a bitch. I'm going to state a fact. It's that you are ignorant. Tom, back me up here. You know what my favorite part of a relationship is? When you talk about girls respecting themselves, my favorite part of a relationship is six months in when you start saying, oh, well, I guess I don't have to worry about my weight anymore. Oh, well, I guess I don't really need to get dressed up to go out anymore. Yeah, talk about, you know, respecting yourself. Seriously, Tom, the only way you can get a chick to look good is on the first date. And after that, it's all downhill, bro. So I get what I can on the first date. If she doesn't take care of business, I move on. And that's how it is. Because I learned no, from the best, buddy. No, if, you don't, if the girl doesn't put out and you're still taking her out on really nice dates, she'll get dressed up every time. The second you guys start having sex, then things get comfy, cozy, and everything goes downhill for both of you. The best part of the relationship is the beginning of the dating before the sex. That's junk. I don't. St I don't stop going to work just because I had sex. Seriously, you know what it is? Honestly, and, and Tom, I totally agree with you. I do not listen to a word you have to say until you put out. The reason being. How do I know you're not running around with, like, 15 other dudes? And do I care? No. Do I care? No. It's when you say the commitment, I really start to try to get another girl to put out. The second the girl pulls out, you're off to try to get another one. You've already had that. Next. Don't even try to say 
Tom, this Tom, this is a, this is a feminist chick. This is one of those chicks who's, who said, whose mommy said, you know what, don't ever rely on a guy. Or she probably, actually, her mom probably taught her, hey, you know what, get all you can. Get all you can while you can, while you have your lips. Go and get that money. Ladies, they're going to dump you the second you put out anyway. They, they've conquered you already. They're ready to move on. They all want, they all think everybody, every woman has a different vagina. It's going to be really special this time. Ooh, everyone. And I'm sure, I'm sure you and your nun have over there. Down there. Isn't, isn't every, out trying to get, hey, do you expect a guy to pay on the first date every time? Is, is, is that the deal? Yes, that's the way it should be because I'll tell you why. Because what? Because what do I owe you? No, no, no. Let's you talk about this. Special. What do I owe you on the first date, sweetheart? What do I owe you on the first date? Because it makes a woman feel special. What about no, what about what about sex makes a man feel special, sweetheart? That's just how we roll. That's how it goes. Get well, with the times. Maybe, maybe. Hey, if this is the sweetheart, if this is the nineteen fifties, let's let's go back to that. That's fine. Then then you need to seriously think you, about you, you know really if feminism ruined this, this man. Feminism I'm completely ruined men and women relationships. Are you that much of a loser that you want a woman to pay for you on a first date? No, I'm not about. I'm not. I'm not saying. Look, I'm not saying whether I should or shouldn't. Although Lucas has taught me that we go. Do you Dutch, feel like man. a man when when you split the check with a woman? Does that make you feel macho? You feel real good about yourself? I'll tell you, I tried it the other way. I tried it the other way. I did live as a loser for about five, ten years, doing the gentleman thing, being the good guy. You know who I always lost to? Some guy who was worse looking than me, who had a worse job, who no, treated girls like dead. crap. You want to know why? Because every time you treat a girl like trash, she loves you. When you don't call her, she wants to call you. When you ignore her, all she does is want to pay attention to you. You know who taught me that? Big poppy, Tom Likas. There it is, sweetheart. Learn it. Learn it and live it. I have. That's problem. why I teach my women the exact opposite. Exactly. That's why <laughs> I teach them exactly what to do in these cases. <laughs> Michael hung up. I think that's fantastic. Tom, 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 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I would be willing to bet that two-thirds of the chicks I've effed are as dull as dishwater, okay? But I wouldn't know because they show up at my place at 11 o'clock at night, F me, and they're out by two. It's the Tom Likas Show. From the lot at Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, California, it's the Tom Likas Show. Likas 101, I am your professor... At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Let's say hello here to Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how's it going? Okay, Jeff. Uh, I called uh, called in probably about almost a year ago this time with a similar problem. And uh, anyways, my problem is this: uh, I've been in this relationship for about two years. What happened when you called in a year ago? Uh, well, I just broke it up with the girl, and uh, I was calling to thank you for all your advice. So you had broken up with a girl, and how old were you then? Uh, 19. So let's review. You had a girlfriend a year ago at 19, and I told you you shouldn't have a girlfriend. Yep. And uh, why, what was it that you were calling to complain about a year ago that she was doing? No, I was telling you to, I was calling to tell you I broke up with her and uh, that it was because of your advice that I was moving on. Okay, that's great. And then then after you talked to me, let me understand this, you went back to her. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. How's that I, going? Uh, not so good, man. Um, it's it's taken a huge chunk out of my wallet and uh, I can't do it anymore. Well, <laughs> why'd you do it? Uh I wanted to get laid, bro. There we go. So you're paying to get laid. Why don't you just pay a hooker? It's cheaper. Yeah, probably is. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of like uh, every month, you know, she, she doesn't have a job. Um, she went on disability several months ago. Disability? Yeah. Disability, and uh, now... What is What is her disability? Uh, bipolar and depression. She's bipolar. So uh, the only reason she's having sex with you is because she's nuts. <laughs> well, or maybe, maybe I'm the only reason I'm having sex with her is because I'm nuts. Well, if you're, uh, but you're not clinically diagnosed like she is. No. 
By the way, many of those depression treatment medications, uh -huh. <laughs> many of them are, uh, they, they, what they do is they make you unable to have an orgasm. Do you know that? Yeah, I've heard that. So uh, I, I would, how's I your sex life? You. What's that? How is your sex life? Uh, I'm not very attracted to her right now. So you're not having sex with her? Not not as much as we were, maybe and once a week. Once a week. And how is she enjoying the sex being on medication now? Uh, she Honestly, she wants it more than I do. Uh huh. Is she having uh, an orgasm when she's having sex with you? Not always. Probably not that often. Yeah. Right. So what is your question, son? Well, um, you know, she's been asking me for about, you know, a big, a big chunk of change every month. Why do you and, say uh, yes? Because, I, well, I feel bad. Why do you feel bad? Is this your fault? No, it's not at so, all. So why would you feel bad? I don't know. It, it's a manipulative game she plays, and I fall well, for it. Because you, you can't have a, a manipulator without a person who loves to be manipulated like you. Yeah. Yeah. But she wants more money, and uh, it's, it's an exorbitant amount this time. And How much? Uh, right. Well, today it's 500 she wants 500 for what? Uh, to pay her bills. Right. And why should you be paying her bills? Well, I, I don't think I should be. Right. But so why are you? Yeah, because I feel bad. You don't even want the sex anymore. Yeah. So why would you do it? I have no idea. So go ahead and give it to her. Live it up. <sighs> pay her. I can't afford it. Well, sounds like you have to. Borrow it if you have to. Yeah. In fact, give her a thousand. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it, it's somewhere probably in the in the five digit range that I've forked over now. Really, over ten thousand dollars? That's great. Or close. You know what kind of hooker you gonna hire for ten thousand dollars? Yeah. No, I don't. You could have had sex once a week for forty weeks. With the hottest hooker in town. I mean, sex you'd remember the rest of your life. As opposed to, by the way, how good looking is she? She's very, very attractive. <laughs> really? Yeah. And she's not fat or anything? No, not at all. I'd, I'd say an eight or a nine. Wow. Hope it was worth it. Yeah, that's how I got reeled in. At first, it was all good, man. Um, you know, when it I, stops you, being good, why can't you be man enough to move on? Well, that's, that's what I think I might have to do. No, calling. no, you have to do it, but this is why I tell you, you're too immature to have a girlfriend. You're too immature to have a relationship. I told you this a year ago. Yeah. Did you yeah. listen to me? No. No, not everything. You told me to get back in school. I got back in school. I just finished my, you know, my my freshman year of college. Uh, I got a job working full time as well, and uh, you know, I, I got all that going on. But so, I, why do you let her drag you down? You tell me at college you can't meet women. No, that's not what I'm telling you. Well, then if you can meet women, then start doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You should break up with her immediately. What are you laughing at? It, uh, I don't know. It seems like it's easier said than done. No, no. It's very easy. We can call her right now if you want. We can get it done now. I'll be here for you. We'll make the call right now. We'll get this over with. So give me the number. We'll call her right now. I'm serious. I will take the number off the air. We'll call her right now. I, I can I can handle that. No, you know you can't. I can. I've done it before. I <laughs> you did it a year ago, and then you went, so you went whimpering back to her, mm. skipping merrily back to her. You can't do it. What do I? What? Do, how do I do it? What do I do? I told you, we'll do it right now. Right now, you and me, let's go. When we get off the phone, it'll be all over. It'll take a couple of minutes and we'll be done. 
I can't do that. Why not? Doesn't seem right. What do you mean it doesn't seem right? What doesn't seem right? What doesn't seem right? Wait. I don't know. It just feels like that would be a little cruel. You're such a pussy. You truly are a pussy. You deserve everything you're getting. Maybe. Yeah, you do. Well, good luck with this. By the way, you turn like a girl. You're turning into an attention or You've taken up seven and a half minutes of airtime here. And all you're doing is whimpering. I wasted my time on you a year ago. It was a complete waste of time. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. I didn't, uh, I didn't follow through. Because you're not a real man. Guess not. No, you're not. So good luck to you. Uh, good luck getting that money, too. And you're not done paying. You're going to be paying for a while. Maybe you need to get up to twenty or $30,000 before you'll realize that you're being taken for a ride. Good luck. Got nothing to say? Cat got your tongue? Yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I wasn't expecting that. Expecting what? Well, uh, what were you expecting me to say? Good job. Keep forking over the cash. Excellent. No. Is that what you were expecting? No, not at all. Yeah, well, you're not getting that. Why are you surprised? You knew exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Why do you even bother to call in? Uh, I, I didn't know what to, I mean, I, I wasn't sure. I was kind of sure, but, I mean, not really. What did you think? What what other possibilities are there? Good work? You're a lucky guy? What were you expecting? Uh, you telling me I had to break it off. <laughs> well, if you already knew that, you didn't even need to call in, did you? No, I, I didn't. But, I mean, I need to, I, I wanted to know how to go about doing it. Do it immediately. Right. Stop feeling sorry for her. It's not your fault she's bipolar. Do you hear me? Yeah. Be yeah, a I man. Do. I will. I'll do it. When? I don't know. I don't believe you. So you've taken up more than my time than you deserve... And here you are. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do it because I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know what to say to her. I know. What am I going to say? That she's going to cry? What am I going to do? Oh, you make me sick. Where's your father? Where? Yeah, where is he? Uh, at home, probably. Is Does he live with your mother? Uh-huh. What does he say about this? Uh, I, I haven't talked with him about it. Why not? Uh, it's, uh, me and my dad don't really have that kind of relationship. Maybe you ought to. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. The reason you don't tell him this stuff is because he tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Mm. Right? That's uh, why you're afraid to tell your dad about this. Hmm. Right? Yeah, he yeah, he would he would tell me the same thing that I need to get out of it. That's why you're afraid to tell him. Scaredy cat. You're afraid to tell your dad. I think we know everything about you we need to know. Meow. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. The Tom Likas Show.